Shannon, to you first. Take us inside the White House. I've asked this question a zillion times, but today, what is the level of concern inside the White House about what Roger Stone might know or what he might say about Bob Mueller? Because if you listen to Roger Stone, he seems to have pledged his undying love and support for the president. Right. Well, I mean, we've obviously heard uh, people say that before, Michael Cohen, and then, you know, once reality sets in, uh, they can, you know, change their mind, change their tune to some extent. But right, at, at this point, you know, there's no sense of, you know, concern that Roger's going to rat someone out. But after this indictment, there was a sense from people in the White House about what else Mueller might have. Um, I think this, the, you know, the staffers know at this point now that, you know, Mueller doesn't show his, old, his, his whole hand in this indictment. And there were a lot of you know, hints in there or things that showed Mueller might not know um, or might know more than he's putting on in there. Sort of this, you know, a senior campaign official was directed. We don't know who that official was. We don't know who directed it. And we don't know all the communications between WikiLeaks. So there's definitely a sense that we don't know all that Mueller knows. And that's concerning. Um, but regardless, there's a sense that is even if the president has a committed a crime, that this report that Mueller puts out is going to be negative to the president, if not uh, because it implicates him in crimes, just because it will be embarrassing and it will make him show him in a very negative light. That's been a general concern for months now, I would say, around the president. All right, Matt, uh, I want to share what Roger Stone said last night. And of course, you know, take it for the, with a grain of salt. He's quite the performer. They're trying to criminalize legitimate political inquiry. They're trying to li li they're trying to criminalize free speech, which is really what's this about? This, there is no Russian collusion. Uh, I had no collaboration with WikiLeaks. I'm not charged with conspiracy. Believe me, if they could have made that case, they would have. But they, they want to silence me because I will stand up for Donald Trump. That's now, what look. this is really about. Okay, so he's saying, believe me, if they had more charges, they would have uh, moved forward with them. Do you, agree, do you believe that, Matt, or do you expect more charges could be coming? I think that's the biggest question. It's very hard to say. There are a lot of conflicting signals here. On the one hand, you might you could make a legitimate case that uh, if Mueller had all the goods, if he had the evidence to bring a conspiracy charge against Roger Stone and others, he would have brought that Friday. You can make a, a pretty powerful counter argument that the investigation continues. There are some other pieces of evidence he, uh, he he's waiting to get. Grand jury testimony, for example, from a, a former aide to Roger Stone that he wants to look through the evidence he seized in the search warrants that were executed on Friday. And he's building towards a superseding indictment later on that would include both Roger Stone and other people, you know, maybe and potentially other people close to the to, to the president. The signals are, are the, there are signals on both sides. And I, I think the, the smartest thing we can say right now is that we don't know the answer and that we have to, to wait to find out. One thing I will say about the Roger Stone show, you know, you see him saying that that, you know, what Mueller's trying to do is 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 criminalize polit, you know, free speech and criminalize political differences. If that were true, he probably would have already been charged for the actions that were described in that indictment. But he wasn't charged with that. What he was charged with was obstructing justice and lying to investigators. If, in, in fact, all he did was engage in, in protected free speech activities, you'll never see him indicted for that. If he get, does get indicted for, for you know, conspiring with a foreign power, conspiring with WikiLeaks, it will be because there's strong evidence that what he did crossed the line into illegality. Gosh, really good points. That is why I love it when you're here. All right, Charles. Help us understand this, because you wrote an extraordinary piece for the Lawfare blog about Stone's arrest, and you made a really interesting point about the type of guy we are dealing with here. Explain what you meant. Sure, Stephanie. Um, so lying to Congress is a white collarish sort of crime, and normally for somebody like Stone who doesn't have a criminal record or didn't commit a crime of violence, you'd give him a summons and he would turn himself in voluntarily. That would be the normal course. But if you read the indictment carefully, if you look at page 20, for instance, uh, Stone also threatened to kill somebody. He told one witness, uh, prepare to die, expletive. Right, so when prosecutors and agents see that, the first thing they think is, this is not a guy we can trust really to turn himself in. Maybe he was kidding. Perhaps it was hyperbole, but let's let him explain that after he's arrested. You don't take that chance. And so I think in this case, it was entirely appropriate for uh, prosecutors to ask for an arrest warrant, for a judge to issue an arrest warrant, and for the FBI to execute the arrest warrant. That's the way we do it. All right. Well, then what if at the end of all of this, he says, this is just free speech. I'm a performer. I'm an exaggerator. There's nothing to it. 
Well, to Matt's point, look, there's a free speech uh, thing out there, and then there's a crime thing. Free speech is what we're doing right now, talking on television about issues of the day. Crime is lying to Congress or threatening to kill a witness. Courts have been incredibly clear. Those types of speech are not free. They're not unfettered. There are limits to what you can say. You cannot lie to Congress. You cannot threaten to kill witnesses. That is not free speech. That is not First Amendment protected. My goodness. All right, Shannon, uh, let's turn. Michael Cohen's upcoming testimony in Congress. Uh, we do, what do we know about it at this point? It, it sounds, at least today, like it's not going to happen publicly. Right. There's been so much back and forth about this. He was going to testify publicly. Then uh, he said he was afraid to because of uh, you know remarks that the president and his lawyers had made about his father-in-law, suggesting his father-in-law uh, was involved in some criminal activity. So right now it's going to be behind closed doors. Uh, that's the only committee uh, meeting with the, uh, that has been scheduled so far. Uh, that could obviously change as these things keep changing. Um, but you know we knew that Michael Cohen wasn't going to be able to talk publicly about anything happening in an ongoing investigation. So nothing about what he told Mueller or prosecutors in New York. But the concern, at least among the president's sort of inner circle, was that Cohen would be able to say things that were embarrassing to the president. Um, and, and, you know, maybe, again, not implicate him in any crime, but just embarrass him, make him look bad in public light. And then there was the question, though, what value is that to congressional uh, investigators? Um, so I think that's going to be the question. But now that he's behind closed doors, he'll be able to talk uh, certainly more freely about things. He might not be able to get into deep specifics, um, but theoretically, he should be able to to get into some more details. All right, Matt, beyond unusual, unprecedented, what do you make of the fact that Matt Whitaker is talking about this investigation publicly at all? Uh, you know, that performance was a hot mess yesterday. You look at him kind of stammering and sweating. I don't think he intended to, to release that information. I don't think there was anything strategic about it. I think he was nervous and started talking and did what public officials sometimes do when they're nervous, which is he just kind of, you know, let some words come out of his mouth that he shouldn't have. I, that said, I do think what he said is consistent with, with other reporting about the, the end of this probe being near. Now, that may be a couple of weeks. It may be a month. It may be three months da down the road. But I do think we are at, you know, we are in the, the probably the final stages of this investigation and that the, the special counsel is close to wrapping up. That doesn't mean that that we're finished with charges. There could be, you know, a, one or more series of indictments before um, uh, before he closes and before he writes this report to the attorney general, which may or may not be given to Congress or may or may not be released publicly. But I do think what he said was 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 probably an accurate assessment of where the investigation stands. All right, Charles, in your opinion, what is next in the Mueller investigation? Sure. Well, to Matt's point, there's a bunch of threads here. So even if Bob Mueller uh, f files a report, there's still other things that we get to keep our eyes on. For instance, the New York State Attorney General has an investigation. The Southern District of New York has an investigation. And oh, by the way, Stephanie, the Mueller grand jury last month was extended for six more months. Uh, couple that with the fact that search warrants were executed at two of Roger Stone's residences, uh, and that tells you that there's still things for the Mueller team to do. They may have a report that is near completion, but there are more threads to pull. Oh, by the way, gosh, there certainly is. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.